Hello everyone, welcome back to this Siemens i7-1200 PLC high-speed counter topic. In the previous video, we discussed how can we use this counter function block control underscore HIC and how can we read the incremental encoder by using the HIC, the resources number one. We set the channel as A and B and we read the counter. In this video, we will discuss how can we use the mathematical way to calculate this counter convert to rotor speed revolution per second. Before we do that, we can still go back to this Wikipedia, this web page, and go down. We can look at this equation here. The RPM equal to this equation. Basically, we need to record the counter, compare the counter from one sample to next sample. Unit, that's the one second. If we are counting the revolution per second, so we can use this here. We do not need to use this area. And here, this is the lines per revolution from incremental encoder. In this case, I'm using 1024 counters per revolution encoder. So here, I need to use 1024. And the difference between the first time and the second time sample, we can use the interruption OB inside the 1200 controller. So let's go to the TI portal. Okay, now please follow me. Let's go offline. And to accurately count the speed, the one second that unit, that's not enough. Basically, we need to sample this counter a little bit faster. So we will use the cyclic interrupt here. So let's add a new block. Okay, we can pick organization block and select this cyclic interrupt. And we can use the 200 milliseconds as the regular sample time. And from here, we can name that this cyclic interrupt, that's the 200 millisecond, okay? And once we download this OB into the system, so the system will automatically call this OB30 every 200 milliseconds. It automatically call. That's why it named cyclic interrupt. And then we can create one function block. So this function block we can use for future project. And from here, add a new block. And from here, we can name that FB underscore counter to speed, uh, FB100. Since this FB100 will be called by this OB30, this is cyclic interrupt 200 milliseconds. So to allow this flexible code, I will name a channel, that's the input channel, this 200 milliseconds could be a parameter. In case in future you use another cyclic interrupt, for example, 100 milliseconds, this function block can still workable. So I will name this channel, it named cyclic time. The state type, that's the integer. Unit of this input, that is a millisecond. If this function block called by uh, interrupt 200 millisecond OB, so here we can type in 200 into this input. So this 200 value can be adapt in our calculation to adapt to one second. I will show this after. And then this is the FB. So we can use this static value. We can name this record counter. And this is the dent, double integer. And next one, this is the current counter. Okay. And then from the network one, we can use move. Firstly, let's move the channel to current counter. For example, the counter we are using ID 1000, right? And then we can move this ID 1000 to the current counter. And then we can use the mass to do a sub. And this sub will count the current counter minus the record counter. and the result that is a delta counter. Drag to here, delta counter. So all the calculation, we will use this uh, delta counter. This delta counter, that's this area. Okay, counter difference, the delta counter. Okay, and after this, we will figure out this is one second unit. And this record counter, we will use another network. Let's create a new network. And use move. And move the current counter to record. 
So this uh, record counter represent the counter result from the last time when this function block was called. The record counter. And this area, this is the actual the core, the equation. Okay, we will use this calculate. So firstly, this data one, this is our data source, the delta counter. And then the delta counter, if we recall, this denominator here, that is one second. However, now we are calling this function block with the 200 milliseconds. So we need to rescale back to one second. How we can do this? We will times one second and divide this 200 milliseconds. So which means if the input two, that's the one second here, and we will divide 200. 200 come from this cycle time. So we can create this input three. So we can drag this cyclic time here. So this equation, that means the input one, we will time the input two. That's 1,000, one second. But we need to over the input three here. OK, so the result of this area, this is this area. And then we will use this value, divide this lines per revolution from incremental encoder. But before that, I will convert this result into a real value. We will convert this result to a real value at first. So firstly, this result we can name. So this is a result. This is the one uh, ratio. We can call that ratio result. Okay, this result, this is an integer. But we will name another ratio result. This is a real. And this is a dent. Okay, so this result, this is a dent. And then we will convert, convert this dent to real. Okay, let's drag this real value. The value is the same, but we need to convert to real. Okay, we will convert this dent to real. And after this, we will use another calculation. And then we will use this value divide the how many lines per revolution from your incremental encoder. In my case, I'm using 1024 counters per revolution, the incremental encoder, okay? So this result, we will divide, math, divide. So this result, let's divide my incremental encoder, 1024, okay? And this result, that represent revolution per second. So speed revolution per second. Real, let's drag to here, okay? Okay, this is the entire equation to convert the counter using this cyclic interrupt and convert to the speed revolution per second, okay? And then don't forget we need to use this second interrupt call this function block. Meantime, we will give the input parameter 200 to this input here. Let's go to the second interrupt. At here, we can call this FB. So it will generate one instant DB. We can name that 101, okay? And we will type in 200 here. That's because we are using this OB30. This OB30 we set 200 milliseconds as it's a cyclic time. If next time we are using 500 milliseconds, then when we call this FB using the 500 milliseconds OB, so here the parameter we will type in 500. That's very flexible, okay? And now we can download the program, okay? Now I can start up the motor. We are testing convert the counter to revolution per second. Okay, now I start up the motor and then let's go back to the FB here. Go online. So the result of this equation that is here, 
Okay, so we can see now my motor roughly running one revolution per second. So we can see this result one point something. This is a one revolution per second. And to read, to use this value, also we can read the value from this instant dB because this is the instant dB when we call this IB. This is here, dB101. And if we open, and if we click this uh, online monitor, so this is my result. I can also declare this result as the output. So from this IP output, we can connect another variable and we can use this value. Also, you can directly drag this value to convert, to copy it to uh, MD address or DB address. Okay, this is a revolution per second. This is a common way for the roller or for the conveyor. Usually their unit that's the revolution per second. Or if you want to translate to RPM, revolution per minute, you just need to time 60. This is a RPM. That's the revolutions per minute. Okay, this is the counter convert to revolution per second. And this is the common case using the Siemens i7-1200 PLC using one encoder. Read this encoder as a counter and convert to revolution per second as a speed value for your motor or for your conveyor. All right, that's it for today. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumb up. If you like to watch more videos in my channel, please subscribe and hit the bell. Thank you for watching.